In January, I got to visit the island nation of Trinidad. I got to see family. I saw interesting plants. I got to see beaches. I had some great food. And of course, I did a learning adventure. This time, about a musical instrument known as the steel pan. Before we get to that, you may be wondering a little about Trinidad. If you follow the chain of Caribbean islands southward, the last island before you get to South America is Trinidad. In fact, Trinidad is only seven miles off the coast of Venezuela. Trinidad is the larger island of the two main islands that make up the country of Trinidad and Tobago. It's about 1,800 square miles, which is a little larger than the state of Rhode Island. It's home to 1.3 million people and the birthplace of the only acoustical instrument invented in the 20th century, the steel pan. In the 1940s, the U.S. established military bases in Trinidad, and soon there was a surplus of empty 55-gallon oil drums. Regular drums were outlawed in the island's annual carnival celebrations, so some resourceful musicians made use of these oil drums to make music. It didn't take long to discover that the dents in the drums produced different notes and tones. The next step was soon taken and the drum players began fashioning intentional dents in the barrel head so they could produce a wide range of notes. Experimentation, refining, and cooperation led to a standardization of patterns and different drum configurations. There are lots of variations, but a basic overview can be seen by breaking the steel band into three different groups. The first group is the frontline section, and it consists of the tenor, double tenor, and the double second. Here is a brief look at each of those drums. First, there is the tenor, sometimes called the lead. This pan produces the highest notes and usually plays the melody. Next is the double tenor, or double lead. It is made up of two pans, played by one musician. It is versatile that it can reinforce the melody, play a counter melody, harmonize, or even strum chords. Then there's the double second. It is also two pans, played by one person, and produces notes in the alto range. Its skirt, or the side, is longer than the tenor drums. The middle section consists of guitar pans, cello pans, and quadraphonic pans. The double or triple guitar, as the name implies, can consist of two or three pans. They are sometimes called the middles because they produce the middle range of notes. They normally provide a strumming harmonic support. Then there are the cello pans. These can be a three or a four pan setup and they have even a longer skirt. They produce the baritone range of sound. A three cello setup is played by three people. A four cello setup would be two people playing two drums each. The quadraphonic pans are a set of four pans played by one person and are considered the most difficult to play. They have a wide middle range and are versatile in how they can be used. The bass section is the last section. The bass drums are the largest drums with skirts that are full length and they play the lowest range. They can be in configurations of four, six, or seven drums, and each drum only has three notes. Keeping these drums playing the right tones is the job of a tuner. We stop by the home of the steel pan band, the Valley Harps, to see the tuner in action. He let me watch him tune the drums. Note that he makes adjustments for both above and below. Then he let me try it out and play a few notes.
Then he showed me the notes from a different style drum. <laughs> After that, he let me explore. The entire place is called a pan yard, and it's where the Valley Harps Pan Orchestra will practice for carnival, competitions, and concerts. I visited a different pan yard to watch them practice. This is the home of Phase 2 Pan Groove. We caught part of two practices. Phase 2 Junior was wrapping up practice when we arrived. Junior group is for ages less than 21, and they have had performers as young as four. At the time we saw them play, they were rehearsing for the 2023 National Junior Panorama Competition, which was about a week away. They've been practicing every day for up to three hours a day. Some of the kids you see here have been playing less than a year. After they wrapped up practice, the pan yard was turned over to the adults. Even as the groups were swapping out, some of the musicians began warming up and working on their harmonies. When everyone was in place, we got to see all of the sections in action. This band will soon be competing as well. The semifinals for the National Panorama Competition is held just a couple of weeks after the junior competition. Phase two will be competing in the large band group. If they make the finals, they will compete again two weeks later on February 18th. It doesn't take long to see how important the steel pan is to the culture of Trinidad. The music is lively and full spirited. The competition and the work they put in is very serious, but the whole endeavor is filled with fun and community fellowship. And maybe that's the best summary of the steel pan. Yes, it is an instrument, but it is also an invitation for vibrant, talented, fun-loving people to come together for a joyous time. And that is a wonderful tribute to the people of Trinidad. It's no wonder that the steel pan has spread to so many other countries around the world, including up and down the Caribbean islands, the U.S., Great Britain, Korea, and the Scandinavian countries. Do you want to try out playing the steel pan yourself?
but don't have access to one? You can download SteelPan apps on your phone or tablet. Or you can do what I do and just relax and listen to some pan music from your favorite music streaming service. Thanks, Valley Harps and Phase Two, for teaching me more about the steel pan. And thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.